So what we're going to do is go through a typical weight and balance scenario for uh, 680, uh, Twin Commander 680 FP. Um, the first thing, obviously, is that we've got to get our weight and balance information out of the airplane so that we can do this. Um, in this case, we've got our empty weight and our uh, moment. Uh, we can divide those to get, you know, divide the weight into the moment to get our arm because we do need that um, in a moment. Um, the goal here is that we're going to actually show you how to do weight and balance in ForeFlight. So we're going to be taking these numbers and transposing them over to, uh, transferring them over to ForeFlight so that we can more easily do our weight and balance before we go anywhere. So the first thing about this airplane is that the uh, datum line is actually 152 inches in front of the leading edge of the airplane. So um, all of our measurements are off of that point. Um, so it's a good idea to know where that datum is because it lets you know whether your numbers actually make sense. Um, so in this case, I know that the, the front seats are in front of the wings, so we know that 94 inches is less than 152, so it looks pretty close. So we've got our pilot seats, our middle seats, and our back seats, and then our baggage area. Um, as we scroll down uh, the page here, we get our fuel baggage and our aux fuel. Um, the one thing to note about the fuel system on this airplane is that it actually changes the, the CG as you burn. Um, so it's not a consistent CG. Um, so we actually want to put all of these numbers into the weight and balance calculations because we need to know what the moment is at that particular uh, gallon level. Um, so we are going to be plugging this information in specifically into ForeFlight. Now, if I wanted a particular CG, I could either take 12,000 divided, divided by 60, or I could take 175,000 divided by 936, and that'll give me a CG, but it's not really going to be the, an accurate uh, depiction of what's going on. Another thing is our uh, outboard aux tanks. Um, there's, there's 67 gallons that goes into those. Um, they're also variable, but the problem in ForeFlight is we don't have the ability to have multiple variable fuel loads. So for this uh, selection, you're going to see that I actually chose to go with our minimum Ford CG so that um, we take the worst case scenario. In a, in a Twin Commander, it generally goes nose heavy when it starts to burn fuel. And so we're going to take the most forward uh, nose heavy situation that we can um, so that we can make sure we're always inside of our envelope. Our baggage area, um, it can hold a maximum of 350 pounds. So I chose to use this uh, area and these are all static so it doesn't really matter what you pick. Um, but I just took 350 into 70,000 to get my CG on that particular area. Now on this airplane, if you look up here at the top, we actually have a minimum and maximum load limit. So I don't have to um, change anything here um, as I go down. These are all linear, so I, no matter which one of these I pick, if I divide them, I'm going to come up with 167.4 and 174.4. Um, so it's not a whole lot of worrying to do here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually go into uh, ForeFlight and take a look at what we've got to do to get this set up. Um, now, by default, uh, if we go in from a weight and balance and do a hit the plus sign up here, you're actually going to create a new profile, and it kind of walks you through a lot of this stuff. In my case, I've already done it, so I'm just going to come down here and edit it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the setup screen. And from here, we have the, the airplane information at the top, and then as we scroll down, we get specific information about the stations. Now, the first thing we want is the cockpit, so we're going to select it. You can note, you note that we have the name, the arm, and then a limit if there is a limit, uh, and then what type of station it is. Is it fixed or is it variable? And in this case, it's a fixed station, so we're just going to put in the information from our weight and balance uh, sheet. We're going to do the same thing for our uh, forward and middle seats and uh, also the baggage area because none of those change, so they're all pretty specific. Now, in the baggage area, we have a limit, so you can see I've put in 350 for the limit there. Now we get our uh, empty weight and CG for the airplane. Now the, the thing about this is if I put the moment in from the sheet, it'll automatically calculate the CG, or if I put the CG, it'll automatically calculate the moment. So it, it kind of helps you out with that. We get our, our weight limits for the, the ramp and takeoff weights, landing weights. 
um, and then we get our uh, actual CG limits. Now to do the CG limits, what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to this chart and we're going to take a look. We want our, in this case, our forward CG limit. So we're going to look over here on the forward side, the, the less uh, value here, and we're going to take our less weight, our, the lower weight, divided into the lower minimum. So this is our forward CG. And then this is going to give us the first part of it. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom to our maximum weight. And again, that forward CG, and we're going to get that. So you can see that we have in the forward CG limit, we have our uh, numbers plugged in here. So you're just going to click on the thing, fill in the numbers that it's supposed to be, and hit save. Um, so we get our, our forward CG limit. To get the aft CG limit, we're going to come back up here to the top, take the same 4,800, and divide it into 837,000. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom and take the 8,000 divided into uh, the uh, number over here times 1,000. And then that's going to give us this number. So in this case, because it is linear, these numbers don't change. So we could have just taken the weight and this is our, is our min, the 8,000 and this is our max. Um, so we could you know easily calculate it without having to do much math here. Now, the problem with this particular uh, airplane is that when we get ready to do our fuel, um, you'll notice down here at the bottom, uh, when, we, when we come up here to create our fuel, so right here is our, our fuel tanks. Now, uh, ForeFlight doesn't currently have the ability to have multiple moment tables for uh, two different fuel tanks. So what I chose to do is actually take the worst case scenario for my aux tank. So I took the, fo the most forward CG and weight, filled that in and set it as a fixed arm. Um, so because I can't really do much with the aux tanks um, because I'm really more interested in the main tanks because they've got more fuel in them. Um, so when I go over here to the aux, I mean to the main tanks, you'll notice that everything's the same. I've got my arm and limit and all that stuff in here. But the thing down here at the bottom is I actually changed it to a variable arm because I actually want to put in different values for the limits. Um, so you're just going to change that to a variable arm. And then what you end up with is down here at the very bottom, we're just going to take the numbers from our chart and plug them into here. So now over time, depending on how many gallons of fuel I have, I have different moments that, that I'm going to be calculating against. And you can see here in the middle of the screen where the chart is, it actually has a, a squiggly line there because the moments are actually changing as I'm burning burning fuel out. So um, now one last note, um, the if I hit the edit button at the very bottom, it actually gives me the ability to add additional uh, sections in here. Um, and the same thing up here for my forward and aft CG. Now I've got a square box because I only have my forward and CG only have two points. Um, but if you have a uh, envelope that has different shapes, then you would actually just add additional forward points and aft points, and you'd end up drawing your own uh, envelope over there in the middle, just like it looks in your owner's manual. So once we get that done, we're going to hit the done button, and now we're going to go to load. Now during the load, we're going to put in our, our pilot, co-pilot, passengers, um, baggage. Those are all fairly simple. This does not currently interface to the flight plan. So you're going to have to actually click on the fuel tanks and you're going to put in your, the total that you have. And then you're going to have your in-flight consumption and your ground consumption for that particular fuel tank. And then you're going to save it. And then you're going to go to your aux tanks and you're going to do the same thing. Now, you, obviously, you can get this information off the flight plan, but you have to go get it. Um, now, what ends up happening is you'll notice that we have a takeoff, landing, and a zero fuel. So in this case, I told it that I was burning almost everything out of the main tank. But then when I get down uh, here, we've still got aux tanks that we haven't burned anything from. So you can see the difference between takeoff and landing and then what we have left in the tank and we can kind of see how we fit inside the CG envelope for the entirety of the trip. Um, and then if we were to run all the way to, to being empty, how far you know are we going to be inside that envelope? So you can see we're taking off at almost max gross, but we're good on the CG. And then we run down until we land and we're still good on the CG, but we don't weigh as much. 
Now, over here on the right, we get our numbers, so you can actually see the numbers instead of just looking at the chart. And then down at the very bottom, you have an audit mode that actually gives you more detail on each of your stations at takeoff and at landing. Uh, so it's you know pretty pretty useful information. Uh, the main thing though is being able to just quickly see that you're going to be inside your envelope before you take off, uh, and having it right here in ForeFlight makes it extremely handy.